So welcome to the VLSF for all. So today we have the Kumkum Rai with us. So hi Kumkum, hi, how are you? Hi, hello, I'm fine. I hope you're doing fine too. Yeah, so, so we will start with your brief introduction from where you have done the education and currently where you are working. Yeah, sure. So I graduated from NIT Durgapur in 2024 itself with a B.Tech in Electronics and Communication Engineering. Currently, I work as an ASIC engineer at NVIDIA. NVIDIA, okay, fine. So, so you have taken the admission in, uh, how you prepare for the IADJ means, uh, so how was your preparation at that time and why you have taken only electronics, uh, not uh, why not uh, computer science in other than it is right? Okay, so uh, my journey with IADJ preparation dates back to when I was in class 11. So I took up science because I was more interested towards that stream. And I started my preparation. I joined an institute in Fridji. And I was preparing from my hometown in Kolkata itself. Mm. And I took up electronics and communication engineering uh, solely because I was more inclined towards that. Because in class uh, 11 and 12, we have the semiconductor and uh, that those chapters in physics, right? Mm -hmm. So it kind of intrigued me. So I took up electronics and communication engineering. Yeah, that's that's yeah. about it. So how was the college life at uh, NIT Durgapur? It was fantastic. And okay. though we missed first few years of our college life due to COVID, because uh, I joined college in December 2020, at the time when COVID was at like in its full stream and that's why we had online classes and all but eventually it panned out nicely i had the opportunity to collaborate and uh, meet very bright minds so to speak and it was a fantastic journey at the end okay so how you plan that you want to go for particularly vlsa because there must be other companies also like software non-tech companies so how you decided this thing uh, it was uh, in my second year that I went to one of the uh, seminars, one of the first offline seminars in our department. So it was organized by the Electronic Society of our college, where we were given hands-on experience with Arduino and all those stuff. So the president of that club at that time kind of uh, motivated me because he was placed in Qualcomm and he was um, speaking about electronics in such a... Uh, nice way that I was intrigued at first and then I reached out to him and then I uh, got to know more and more and then I realized okay in hardware it's not just about uh, the Arduino board and all mm -hmm. we have a vast field beyond that VLSI then digital analog and all those stuff so I tried and explored things and eventually I was very much interested in the architecture part so eventually it was the way that I tried to go forward with, but it was difficult a bit because not much uh, core companies come on campus. So it was a hard uh, journey to be honest. Okay. So what are the subjects you have prepared for the NVIDIA? So you can okay. just brief the topics and all. Yeah, sure. So not only for NVIDIA, for any core company, from yeah. my personal experience, I see that they test us on uh, for subjects like basic electronics, digital electronics. And when I say basic electronics, it also includes some analog part where we have circuits and everything. Then uh, comes micro microcontroller and microprocessor where some companies, uh, I faced questions based on uh, the assembly language programming kind of stuff. Then uh, VLSI where we have static timing analysis and computer organization and architecture is a very important uh, subject if you are going for like digital domain, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, some uh, companies even ask for C programming, like mm -hmm. basic programming knowledge, where they gave us go to coding snippet and we had to solve questions based on that. And aptitude also plays an important role in some online assessments. So digital basics of Verilog, computer programming, aptitude and computer architecture. Other than this, STA is also important? Yeah, VLSI STA is very important. Uh, and apart from that, 
uh, if you are given some questions based on assembly language programming, which comes under that microprocessor, microcontroller subject that we studied. Okay. So you can just tell me the selection process of NVIDIA for or is this what campus placement or off campus and how many rounds were there, how many tests were there, what are the important topics? You can take your time and just give me the brief about this. Yeah, sure. So I applied off campus. It was a program named Next Program, Next NVIDIA program. Exceptional Talent Program, yeah. which was conducted last year. So I applied through that and it consisted of four rounds. Uh, two technical online assessment and uh, two technical interviews. So it was a, an elimination kind of uh, entire process. So you clear one round and you go to the next and then so forth. So it all started with the application phase where I think they had this resume uh, shortlisting because they mentioned the CGPA criteria to be more than six or something. They uh, they allowed both BTEC and MTEC grads to apply for the Cool. And the topics which uh, were important, which I realized were the same, which I have mentioned before, digital uh, and, and then uh, here we did not face questions on assembly language programming, but we did have C programming aptitude and COA based question and STA to an extent. There was also low power based questions, which uh, were honest and apart from that, I think it was generic, like only the level of questions increased from one test to another, but the uh, mm -hmm. content remained the same. Okay. Also, other than the NVIDIA, you have given any other companies interview in VLSA particularly? Uh, no. The thing is, when I was applying for companies uh, during the internship period in third year, I applied for TI and uh, even Qualcomm and other companies, but I could not clear the online assessment rounds. Mm -hmm. So I did not have the opportunity to set for the interview, so to speak. I had uh, interviewed for another company named John Deere, but it was not a VLSI focused company. It was more of like electronics domain, like a uh, embedded system and all this stuff, like electrification. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not very relevant to the VLSI code. Other than that, the only company which I interviewed for was uh, NVIDIA and I got selected, so I did not have to appear for this. Also from the campus, you must getting some other offer also, like in the software. Yeah, uh, for, from so campus, uh, I had John Deere's offer, but it was in the power electronics uh, domain. Okay. Uh, mostly, yeah. Okay. So have you prepared for the gate exam also or given the gate exam? No, I did not prepare for gate exam, so to speak. But what I did was when I was doing my preparation for interviews and even for the campus placement, I did went through the uh, went through the questions of uh, gate PYQ PYQ PYQ. to help me prepare. Okay, okay. So in the test, how many questions were there in Nvidia particularly? How many questions? If you remember, just the idea. Uh, it's very difficult. It's like more than a year ago that I okay, did the test. Okay, fine, fine, fine. The uh, important topics for the interview, particularly, uh, if you remember uh, some. I topics. already have mentioned it. Like the same, like the concept which I have stated earlier is the same. They just yeah. test you on the fundamentals. So if you're clear okay. with the fundamentals in those mm -hmm. subjects, mm -hmm. uh, digital electronics, COA, mm -hmm. and even like uh, very long, mm -hmm. then it's more than enough. Okay, okay. So how you got to know about VLSF for all? So at the time of preparation, you was aware of the VLSF for all YouTube channel or some, some LinkedIn and all. I I don't think I was aware of the LinkedIn. So hmm. uh, I was aware of the YouTube channel because I think I did prepare a few topics from uh, VLSI using the YouTube channel because my only source was YouTube because I did not take any yeah. courses on anything. So yeah, it's yeah. Helpful. I cannot pinpoint the exact topics which I uh, went through, mm -hmm. but yeah, I had the basic idea. Yeah. So, what are the different sources you referred at the time of preparation? So, my uh, preparation sources uh, included the uh, lecture notes from my uh, semester. It might come a bit off handed for many people, but I did attend classes regularly and it was quite helpful, especially PPTs were given. Because they also prepare their PPTs from books and all, and they refer some books. So for digital electronics, I did uh, refer to the book uh, Digital Design by Maurice Menon. Maurice Menon. And for uh, computer organization and architecture, I went through the IIT KGB's NPTEL lecture. 
and it is the entire playlist and i went through the entire playlist and it was uh, very helpful even for blsi like very log part there was hardware modeling using uh, very log uh, nptel course again that i took and apart from that youtube channel like here and there like any topic that i wanted to know i just went through okay so total how many students were selected with you for with the this process only like next program test process if you have the idea uh the thing is the company never actually revealed that uh it's it's difficult to quote that you have the estimated or roughly idea like 50 100 like range uh, no actually the entire process like was in phases and i'm not uh-huh. sure whether uh, it was like done uh, such that i can quote a number here. okay okay fine so currently you are working as a asic design engineer so what is the particular work you have and what are the skills that is required for this role and uh, what are the tools you are using okay so uh, currently i am in the architecture team and most of the uh, work uh, revolves around if you have good understanding of coa and like basic architecture always uh, when we are working we build upon the foundation so uh, it's like the fundamentals are very important so you have to be clear with that and apart from that tools like mostly they are internal tools so i cannot talk about them but yeah there are many people who use uh, different industry wide tool internally so mm-hmm. let's suppose you have not go, go to the nvidia so what and you want to go for v- uh, vlsi industry so what what should be the ideal step that uh, a student they should do like they should go for the masters or what should be the ideal way to get to the to the vlsi industry so most of the narrative regarding vlsi domain which i also heard as a fresher was like uh, companies generally prefer master people or like somebody with a higher degree because mm-hmm. they have greater knowledge in that domain and it's true to an extent because there are many teams who actually look for masters and experience and all uh, but i cannot actually comment on this because i have not done my masters but i have seen many people who do that they have done the btec and immediately they went for masters and then they got into very good companies with a very good pay yeah. so it can be one option if you have not uh, gotten any offer so to speak up to your btec immediately upskilling is also an option you can upskill mm-hmm. yourself and then apply for opportunities mm-hmm. on campus as and when they appear so there are various ways like this to so- according to me it should be like that uh, if you are that tier 2 college or tier 3 college then you should go for masters and if you are from nits or iits then you can up skill yourself and yeah. go directly also yeah. it you can, can join some startup also and and switch to the product based company that is also yes. later because uh, companies open up their uh, job openings for like one year or two year plus experience in the industry exactly. yes. so in nit durgapur what are the companies that is coming for the vlsi specifically so the placement scenario was such that core companies in general are very uh, little in number uh, companies like samsung semiconductor and then uh, ti like texas instruments and then qualcomm used to come but this year they didn't mm-hmm. and, um, apart from that arm is there amd they came for like six month internship and all those offers so uh, there are like few companies it's mostly off campus opportunities that we will look for so that is the scenario okay you have got the offer in the recession time and a lot of student from top colleges also are struggling right now so what is the other other than the normal preparation they should do like uh, they should add the more projects what they should do to get into the vlsi industry or software industry what what are the other things that other student are not doing and then the average student okay so here comes uh, a thing that i have personally experienced it's not just about learning and upskilling and like there is a limit to that okay mm-hmm. the, uh, next ingredient in the success story comes networking and linkedin played a very important role in this yeah. i got to know about nvidia's next program only through linkedin yes so i saw a post and i thought okay my one of my friends sent it to me and i was like first i was skeptical whether i should even apply because mm. we take an both are there and so many uh, uh-huh. requirements are there but i did apply and eventually i got successful uh, thankfully but it's like always getting to know what is happening around you 
Yeah. There are many opportunities being posted every day on LinkedIn or any other platform that people might use. So it's important to look out for opportunities because if you are very well prepared and you're sitting there idly, you are not going to get anything. So yeah. you need to go out and search in that way. Okay. Okay. So at the let's say include the session. So at the end, you want to give some tips for the juniors who are who are in the college right now or they are struggling for the job in Vila say particularly. So my advice usually to my juniors uh, is like first get your fundamentals clear. Second, uh, upskill yourself, build projects, uh, showcase your talent in that way, and then uh, network with people. Uh, reach out to people who are already uh, placed in companies which you aim for. Go get to know about their experience. Read about interview experience on on, on online platforms and all. And at the end of the day. Uh, be consistent and have faith in yourself because times are tough but eventually you will land up in a very good space because uh, that's how things work out I and hope that works out very well so thank you Kumkun. thank you for your time all the best thank you bye thank you